Greetings, everyone. My name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Callie's Trials. During the last part, I completed Chapter 2, collected the Assault Rifle, and the Overpowered Blade Gun, which completely destroyed the Carl the Turd, and made level grinding so much easier in the background. As you can see, I leveled up my pistol to level 9, my shotgun to level 9, and my assault rifle to level 8. Unfortunately, the assault rifle has a kind of a slow leveling rate, so it's probably going to take a while for it to level up. I'm quite shocked in the previous part, I'm still at awe from reviewing the footage of how fast the blade gun leveled itself up. I would assume it would be leveling at the same rate, but no. Apparently, the way the weapon experience works in this game is more based off of uses or hits rather than the amount of damage it does. So, because the blade gun hits an enemy multiple times, it leveled up the fastest. And considering that I can rapid fire it like this, well, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a disc one nuke, basically. But, as I said, in this part I'll be covering Chapter 3, The Dying Light. Now, also, in addition to the grinding I did for weapons, I leveled up Callie up to level 12, so you can see all the hearts she has. And I have over 28,000 gold, and for, I bought the coin multiplier from the from Lloyd's shop. So I, now I should get twice the amount of coins than I usually did. And I'm going to extensively be using the blade gun over here to speed up the process. Oh yeah, and we also have a new enemy type that, uh, unfortunately, I accidentally introduced. These are zombies. Well, they slowly move on to your position. They're slowly left and right moving enemies, but once you go on to your position, they'll actually slowly start following you. Which makes them a little bit different compared to the other left and right enemies, but they're still relatively easy to deal with because they don't fire projectiles at you. Oh, and I also took a look at the achievement list of this game. And from what I discovered, there aren't that many unique enemy types present in this title. I know it's a mobile port, but it's kind of disappointing. I really wish there was more enemy types in this game. Sure, they could be just pallet slops and uh, just statistically tougher, and I would be fine with that and if they have the same patterns, but considering there's not that many regardless, it's kind of unfortunate in my, in my, own, in my own opinion. As I said, I don't mind pallet swaps as much, I just would like some more visual variety. Sure, having different varieties of foes who attack you with different patterns would be the best, but if, I, if that's not an option, I, I would take a pallet swaps. Here's a bunch of zombies. Which I'll completely destroy and tear to shreds with my blade gun. Although it seems like they're only getting hit once at a time, not all of them at once. So that makes them a little bit different. But oh boy, lots of treasure. And the X2 coin multiplier really is helpful. Once I get enough money to buy the X5 coin multiplier, it's going to make grinding so, so much easier. I'm probably going to buy the X5 multiplier off screen and grind up to buy off the shortcuts. As well as the energy wave or something. So I can actually f use my sword in a better capacity. Oh! Turrets are the only ability or the only enemy in this game who really have a, who resist the blade, uh, the blade gun so well. Mainly because of their high HP values, they can last for quite a while from getting hit from it. So this is the only type of enemy that really is resists the blade gun. And also because they're completely stationary, they only take one hit at a time. Unlike the other enemies who move at once, so they actually get hit multiple times. There we go. So facing uh, these turrets in close corridors is going to be annoying regardless of what part of the game I'm in. After all, the blade gun will only deal one point, one point damage at max level. The next thing to do would probably be to buy, uh, to buy the reduced enemy HP upgrade. I think it reduces that at a percentile version. And we still have these baby bears out here, and as well as these life bandits. We really should be seeing tougher versions of these enemies after two whole chapters. I mean, we kind of moved over 40 or 50 levels by this point. We might as well should be seeing tougher enemy types. I'm not gonna jump down there. I'm not gonna risk it. Oh, you do have to jump down. You can't get up here without the triple jump. 
Oh good, we finally have a palette swap. Red, red slimes. Treasure. Okay, 400 gold. I'll take it, definitely. Ooh, and we get a new weapon, the boomerang. We would only be able to get this if we had the triple jump at this point. Oh, there's a door going here. Interesting. Okay, I can only have four boomerangs at once on screen. I can rapid fire it, but it's not going to be as useful there. A lot of numbers there, but how useful is it going to be? Each of them only deals about point, uh, 10 points of damage, but once I level it up more, hopefully it'll become more of a threat. I'm noticing a trend in the previous chapters where the second weapon you get in the chapter is the best one against the boss. Okay, 0.5 damage. Overall, it isn't too bad yet. But it seems like I need to level it up more to see its better potential. Just like the blade gun though, it seems like it takes... It actually levels up pretty fast. Oh, that was a bad situation for my part. And unlike the blade gun, it, it will move diagonally, so that's... It. So that's well. And wow, I'm, I'm just tanking, face tanking everything. Well, as long as I have treasure chests, I have a guaranteed way of regenerating health. So that's good. But yeah, I was I was expecting I was expecting more palette swaps uh, in chapter two. I mean, we have palette swaps of the green slimes now. Okay, now we have five boomerangs at once and increased rotation. Oh, okay, so it means it hits more. That's nice. Unfortunately, unlike the blade gun, in enclosed corridors, it's not as broke. It's not as broken here. In open corridors, this is going to be a better weapon. And also if the enemy is slightly above me. Ooh, I think I need a... Okay, I need an explosive weapon to get through here. Well, I suppose that's the second weapon we'll get in this game. Oh, lava. Oh good, a new enemy type, skeletons. Okay, oh okay, they use kind of some... Okay, so now they can aim correctly at me. Unlike the enemies before who would only fire straight, now they use roughly fire in the direction I'm jumping. That's nice. We already, we finally have an enemy who's starting to become much more of a threat. Whoa, especially here. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, boy. That's it. That's it, I'm gonna use the blade gun to destroy this. Okay. Now let's use the boomerang. Especially in these close corridors, it's very risky to use the... Well, uh, across these corridors which have these platforms. Okay, the boomerang. Okay, the boomerang is the go-to weapon for use against these turrets. Then, especially when I'm not at level ground. It just tears them to shreds. The blade. The blade gun's better for moving targets, and the boomerang is better against stationary targets. Good to know. So the blade gun isn't completely overpowered. But in order to be properly compared to two, I need to level this up to level 10 and get it, and get the final evolution. Oh, and unlike the blade gun, uh, in, unlike the blade gun which can bounce through walls or, or bounce against walls, this one will pass right through them. Okay, so I can use it to sneak past and hit these skeletons. As such, 
Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I really need a rocket launcher. Or whatever explosive type weapon is supposed to be. Collect the treasure. With all these barriers, I'm wondering if there's going to be a secret challenge which requires me to rapidly switch between weapons in order to survive or collect the extra power up. Either this is just one enemy with multiple zombies combined or it's actually multiple zombies and only one's taking a hit. Really, I'm just spending this time leveling up the boomerang just to see how useful it is. I suppose it's going to be helpful against the boss fight. Oh. Oh good, I got the third evolution for the boomerang. Well, third form, second evolution. Okay, the usual, more boomerangs. Nothing too much of a problem just yet, but things are going to change pretty fast, I believe. Oh yeah, this spot is pretty good for the for the boomerangs. Ow. Oh yes, yeah, sniping through the walls, or rather. Banging through the walls. Oh boy, lava. I'm not gonna risk going go jumping over lava while these enemies are right there trying to shoot me into the pit. Wow, these deal 0.5 points of damage now. That's pretty formidable. Not to mention 0.5 per hit, plus all the multi-targeting, plus there's six of them at once. Um, am I taking the tree ju triple jump pad? Is there a double jump pad, or we're supposed to have triple jump at this point? Because if you, if you do, the players would have to just go back to the beginning, uh, back to Callie's home to purchase this. Wow. Well, these hearts and the money are plentiful. The game is is actually de decently challenging right now, but the main challenge I'm facing is more due to the platforming rather than the enemies themselves. Oh, hello there, spider. Wait a minute. Can you come over here, please? Oh no, it, it won't come. I was hoping to knock it down into the lava or something. Uh, I'm not going to risk falling to the lava myself and get a hoist with my, uh, with my own petard. Oh boy. That's where you have to be a little bit careful because the skeletons are kind of accurate here. Nothing else mu much to say here other than the boomerangs are pretty nice. And the environments are pretty nice to look at. But, as I said in previous parts, and right here, I just wish there were more enemy types, or at least pallet swaps. Oh, whoa. I'm going to be facing that very soon. Let me just go over here, and I'll see who that heavy rocket launcher person is. And, because I am over-level grinded, I don't know what level I'm supposed to be at. Okay, who are you? Heavy Bandit, okay, we finally have stronger versions of the enemy, and oh good, goodness gracious, they have rocket launchers. That's going to be a problem, especially because I have a blast radius. Uh, 
Um, hmm. Let me take the bottom out and see what's over there. Oh, whoa. Okay, more money. Can't fault that. I'll need as much as possible to buy all the upgrades. And I do, and I have enough money to buy the X5 multiplier. So once I finish the this stage off screen, I'll go purchase that. Just some careful platforming over instant death spikes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Do these rocket launchers fall? Do, do these rockets actually follow you slightly? If that's the case, they're basically a, a fusion between the Smokies and and the Skeletons. Well, I'm obligated to go to the left because of all the chance of treasure, of course. Oh boy. Oh, ow. Well, hope, at least it didn't deal too much damage. And the reward is worth it, I think. Of course, the experience I'm getting is getting pretty minute, but although I think the max level for Kali is level 20. Okay, bottomless pits are over here, I guess. Yep, bottomless pits. At least it guided me with all those, uh, with the treasure. Oh, here's my second weapon, the bow. Um, this seems kind of like a downgrade because we started with the pistol. Okay, so it fires slightly downwards. Um, just like the other weapons, I need to upgrade to figure out what it can do. Wow, it deals. Okay, um, it deals the most amount of damage than it compared to any weapon. Okay, here's the blade. Well. Let's see, pistol does 1.6, but the bow by default deals 2 points of damage. So against stationary targets, well, uh, stationary targets slightly below you, I think this will be pretty uh, good to use. I probably should get the first up, uh, first upgrade for this as well, to see how, how it fares. I wonder how this is going to work against the boss as well. If it if it takes too long to get the upgrade, I'll just do it off screen in the next part. I think the bow is good enough any I mean the boomerang is good enough anyway. And I don't think it's going to blow up those blocks that were uh, those stone blocks we saw earlier. We probably need to get the rocket launcher. Well, we very likely need to get that. And the platforming is slowly getting more and more challenging with all these spikes. More zombies. Well, it seems like we always get 0.2 points of damage for using the bow, or upgrading the bow. And just like any other semi- or semi-automatic weapon, well I say semi-automatic even though they fire automatically, I mean weapons other than the assault rifle, you can rapid- f the bow can- you can rapid fire. Or, okay, here's another enemy type, worker bees, finally. Okay, so they're basically faster bats. And being able to fire slightly downwards is kind of useful, especially with enemies who are slightly below you. Although I haven't faced uh, two tough enemies that necessitate it yet. Sure, it does work against, uh, well against these jumping enemies, but I need to fire a little bit. I need to fire, be able to fire more down in order to actually use it better. Okay, first evolution of the bow. Let's see how it fares. Damage, larger arrow, that's it. Um, 
I think I'll level up this weapon off screen. It, it's not really impressive compared to the boomerang and blade. And blade gun. I mean, just look at how awesome the boomerang is, especially if you can guide the enemies. Especially if you can come close enough that you can almost use it as a mini shotgun. Or better shotgun. This is now becoming a better shotgun than the shotgun. To be fair, it seems like the weapons are kind of organized by tiers and not side grades from each other. If we have these worker bees, will we eventually have um, a warrior bees or something? Uh, and eventually a queen bee for as a boss? That seems likely. Whenever I see all these uh, lar long corridors without many enemies, I kind of expect that there's going to be a boss fight coming up. Sorry about that, I had to check something. But whenever there's especially these long lines of enemies, well, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good double grinding spot. Oh, and I haven't really mentioned it in the previous two parts either, but I do like how humorous the enemy expressions are when they get hit. Quite cartoony and kinda of, kinda of funny to see. Really, I haven't faced any frustrating, really frustrating part of the game yet. In fact, I would say the game is a little bit on the easy side. I know there had to be a lot of tolerances made in the mobile version of the game so p players wouldn't fall off pits, but when it, when it sort of transitioned to the PC version, well, without many changes to the level design, it, it feels kind of easy. I know, allowances. Ow. Oh good, this is a spider room, I presume. Oh uh, yeah, this is definitely the spider room. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, this is the any enemy horde room. AKA the place I'll do level grinding off screen. Oh boy, here's the rocket. Yeah, that that rocket does lead up a little bit. Oh boy. Quite a few of them here, so this is the enemy horde room. They're not too durable, thankfully, but the main problem is how damaging and how hard it is to avoid that attack, especially at close range. Where's the boss? I kind of expected to find the boss here. Oh boy. Hopefully the boss isn't a giant spider, considering how annoying these spiders are to hit with almost any weapon. And if you're wondering why I'm using the boomerang so much, well, I kind of showed off the pistol and the shotgun a lot in the previous first part, and I showed off the assault rifle and blade gun in the, in the second part a lot, so might as well give the boomerang a time to shine before it's inevitably outclassed by whatever weapon we get in tier, I mean the fourth stage. Jeez, I'm quite close to dying. I think I should have bought a lamp from the store. One thing's for certain, the enemy density is getting quite higher. Oh! Oh, hello Lloyd! Um, pick a box, okay. Is this a reference to Mario Tr Super Mario Bros. 3? It is. Uh, we're gonna pick all boxes, why not? In fact... No, they were smart this time. Th those will not respawn. I was thinking they were going to be something like the previous ones that did respawn. Yeah, we should be getting a weapon soon enough that I can actually hit... Oh, whoa, okay. Hello there. I didn't expect the skeletons to just waltz right through those 
breakable explosive blocks. We should be reaching the boss any time now. Oh boy, another rocket do. Um, no, I mean rocket bandit. I'll call them heavy bandits or rocket bandits. So the game is definitely amping up with the addition of worker bees, skeletons who can actually aim at you, and the heavy bandits who can, in addition to aiming at, aim at you, have a really damaging and high ex area of explosive effect. High area of effect with their attacks. Not to mention that the platforms are getting, the platforming is getting more dangerous, and the enemy density is getting higher. Probably at this point, you should be buying la uh, lanterns for every stage, just to be safe. Whoa! Of course, sometimes all these number damage numbers popping up can obscure the enemies. Oh, we get a turret weapon in this uh, in this stage. Okay, here's the rocket launcher. I thought I thought we were going to get it in uh, stage four. Oh, we can also rapid fire it too. Um. Yep. I okay. Let's level this up too. Okay, this does even more damage than the bow. Uh, why even use the bow then? Uh, I just feel like the rocket launcher outclass it, especially, uh, well, it doesn't have that area effect just yet, especially as it's easier to use and does more damage at base. Just like the bow, I think I really want to get this up to level 4. How do I get up there? There must be a way of doing that. Oh, it has a okay. It has a maximum range, other than compared to the other weapons, which didn't have a maximum range. It's going to be a slight problem. Um, what's with the rapid firing? Come on, zombie. The one thing I've noted about the zombies is that they do have a truckload of health. Okay, there's the exit. Still, we don't have area of effect for the missiles yet. Ow. Well, that's the first hit from zombies. Ow, whoa, whoa. This isn't going too well yet. I'm just gonna use the boomerang to soften up these targets. But I really should be upgrading the or leveling up the rocket launcher in the background or off screen because I think it will become very formidable once I upgrade it. Oh, I thought he was not going to fire downwards. Oh good, level 14 for Cali. One second over here just to be sure of something. Okay. Probably when I level up this rocket launcher or evolve it, I'll be able to get an area effect explosion.
At this rate, it's probably going to happen during the... Okay, no, it's going to happen here. Alright, first evolution of the rocket launcher. Increased damage, longer range, and bigger rockets. I would like an area effect increase, though. I'm not going to deal with one of those heavy bandits yet, I'm just going to skip past them. They take way too much time. Okay. Oh, okay, we're fighting the Queen Bee. I thought we were going to fight her in the next chapter. I kind of expected a Skeleton King. Oops, I walked out of that by accident. As I was saying, I expected to face the Skeleton King or something. I need to get up here somehow and... Oh, unlike the other bosses, she's actually firing a lot of projectiles at me. Oh boy. And summoning all these worker bees. Oh, this may be a problem. Especially because... And I just got knocked out of the boss fight. Oh, that's annoying. I really should be running onto the other side of the field. This is probably the place where the boomerang would be the best. Oh wait, she can't fire backwards. Ow. Ow. Well, this is going that south pretty fast. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna use the blade. Where's the blade gun? This is the uh, time for the blade gun, I think. Especially because I can hit multiple targets at once. Because I really need to cleave through all these worker bees that she summons. And as long as I hear that hit marker sound in the background, I know it's working. Yeah, it is. As long as, as, long as I can hear that sound, I can guarantee I'm making progress. I don't think this is exactly how they intended the fight to go by staying up here. But hey, it works. And at least this boss is significantly tougher than Carl the Turd, who didn't even fire projectiles and only summoned enemies. There we go, she's dead. Didn't give that much experience, but oh well. But alas, that was chapter 3. In this chapter, I collected the rocket launcher. I collected the bow, which I don't see the use of just yet. And I collected the boomerang, which is quickly becoming my next go-to weapon along with the blade gun. Although I think the rocket launcher will become useful soon enough once I level it up enough. So, in the next part, I'll be covering Chapter 4, A Familiar Foe. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Toodles!